the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. We are recording this program in January of 1986. A couple of months ago, around November 1985, a book appeared in bookstores across the nation that soon became a bestseller. The book is a fictitious novel narrating the arrival, monitoring, of a coded message from outer space that proved the existence of a super intelligence out there trying to contact us on Earth. The message was decoded by computers. And the novel, this fictitious novel, even supports all time religions' belief in God. The novel is contact. You probably saw this book, Contact by Carl Sagan. And there are only four quotations that I would like to share with you in this book. The first quotation appears on the front flap of the book, and it says, In contact, Carl Sagan whose cosmos enthralled millions of readers and television viewers, has brilliantly employed the freedom of fiction to imagine the greatest adventure of all, humanity's first encounter with other intelligent beings. The second quotation appears on page 219, and it describes the computer decoding of this message as this is, the, this is only the most amazing discovery in the history of the world. Let me repeat this quotation. It describes the computer decoding of the message like this. This is only the most amazing discovery in the history of the world. The third quotation that I would like to share with you appears at the end of the novel, page 430, where we find the conclusion of the whole novel. And here it is. There is an intelligence that antedates the universe. In other words, the novel is trying to say that there is God out there. There is an intelligence that antedates the universe. The last quotation that I wish to share with you is non-fictitious. It is not fiction at all. It is Carl Sagan's notes at the end of the book. Carl Sagan says in, his, in the author's note, My fondest hope for this book is that it will be made obsolete by the pace of real scientific discovery. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Carl Sagan's fondest hope has just come true. In the next 50 minutes or so, I will share with you the real scientific discovery of a coded message from outer space, from deep space. And the message will represent the first physical evidence ever for the existence of God. We have been talking about God, and those who believe in God have been presenting circumstantial evidence, but now we are going to witness a miracle. We are going to witness physical evidence, the first incontrovertible evidence that God exists. And we are going to see this proof through the real scientific discovery of a coded message that came to us and could never be human-made. Before I get to the historical development of this message and the monitoring and decoding of it, I would like to make a couple of statements that I consider very important. The first statement is that every utterance you are going to hear in this program 
is a proven scientific fact. Every statement you are going to hear is proven by means of a mathematical code that gives us, provides us with physical evidence that every statement is correct. It is very important that you have full confidence that every statement here is proven by physical evidence. The reason I'm saying this is that some of the statements you are going to hear had in the past provoked ridicule or snickering or some laughter. This will no longer be the case. You see, the message came to this world in many parts. And the first part came to us through the first man, Adam. Adam was created by God and he knew about God. And when he came to this world, he transmitted the first portion of the message. The purpose of the message, as you will see, is to tell us where we came from, why we are here, where we are going, the purpose of our existence. So Adam taught his children and grandchildren about God and everything he knew about the creation of Adam, the creation of the human being, the creation of his wife Eve, and how he came from uh, up there to the planet Earth. That is a very important part of the message. The message afterwards came to us through every messenger of God. Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. And I will go uh, through the stages of development of the message and show you the mathematical code that was embedded in these messages. What happened was that God picked out from every generation a human being through whom God sent part of the message. We are talking about one and the same message. Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus, Muhammad, all these people received parts of one and the same message. And as a proof of authenticity, as it turns out, and as you will witness in this program, God incorporated in his message to us an intricate mathematical code. Intricate beyond human ability. Just to prove that this message is not fabricated by any human being. Abraham contributed a good portion of that message. And you know, uh, you probably watched the movie, The Ten Commandments. You know that Moses was walking in the desert when he saw the burning bush and God communicated with Moses. God communicated part of that message. It was a very significant part, part that we call today the Torah. You saw in the movie and you read in the Bible how the tablets were, were written, were recorded, that the scripture was recorded on the tablets. That scripture in the language of Moses was mathematically coded beyond human ability. And this is what this program is all about. The discovery of a mathematical code embedded within God's message to us 
through his messengers. The first hint, let me go back uh, to Moses, when he carried the tablet with the message on them, the letters on that on those tablets were counted according to an intricate mathematical code, the same mathematical code that was discovered in all the scriptures. The message given to Jesus in his language, Aramaic, was also mathematically coded in that language. The alphabet letters of that message were counted and carefully placed. The whole message in Aramaic was composed according to a mathematical pattern. And this is the pattern that was consistent through every part of the message from Adam to Abraham, Noah before that. Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus, Muhammad, the same mathematical code, the letters, the words, the verses, everything was calculated and carefully placed to prove that the message is from God. The first hint of the discovery of a mathematical code was, at least what we know of, was announced about a thousand years ago. And this was printed recently in a book called Studies in Jewish Mysticism. Studies in Jewish Mysticism. And uh, I will, I'm going to read for you a quotation from that book. No change can be tolerated in the text of the prayers, not even a minute one. Because every change, even of one letter, would destroy the numerical harmony inherent in the text. That was the first hint of a mathematical code in God's message to the world. Here's another quotation from uh, the same book, and this quotation also was written about 900 years ago. According to Rabbi Judah and the Ashkenazi Hasidic school in general, there can be nothing accidental in the Bible, not even the forms of letters, the punctuation, the vocalization, and especially in the numerical structures. How do you like that? 900 years ago marks the first discovery of a mathematical code in the scriptures. And I will go through the details of this amazing mathematical code and how it uh, penetrates and encodes the complete scripture of God. Of course, I'm talking about the original scripture, not any translation. We are talking about the original words of God in the languages of God's messengers. Adam, Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, many, many others. Jesus, Muhammad, and the, the original scripture was coded according to this very intricate, miraculous system. How in the world are we going to study the original scriptures given to Abraham, Moses, David, Jesus, and Muhammad? The mathematical code that God put in his message to the world is in the original scripture, the original words, letters, verses, that were written by God Almighty in those scriptures. In Abraham's scripture, in his original language, Moses' scripture, in his original language, and so on. How are we going to study the original scripture given to Jesus in Aramaic, his language? Well, there is only one scripture in the world today that is original and still intact. And that is the Quran. Back in the year 610 AD, God picked out a man named Muhammad 
and communicated with us through him by giving him the Quran. And Quran today is the only original intact scripture in the original language as written by God Almighty. The Quran represents the latest edition of the scripture. Remember, we are talking about one and the same message. And the mathematical code that I will share with you today was through out the whole message in the Torah, in the Gospel of Jesus, in the Quran, in the Psalms, and uh, as I, men I mentioned to you, glimpses of the mathematical code that uh, were written about about a thousand years ago. Back in 1968, I noticed that the Quran had uh, mysterious letters at the beginning of certain chapters. For example, chapter 2 begins, the first verse is only three letters, A-L-M. What is A-L-M? I wondered. Twenty-nine chapters in Quran have these mysterious letters. Chapter 50 is entitled Q. That's it, Q. And is prefixed with the letter Q. Nothing else, Q. Uh, chapter 68 is prefixed with the letter N. Chapter 36 is prefixed with the letter letters Y, S, and so on. These letters remained mysterious for 1400 years, since 610 AD. Well, curiosity led me to put the Quran in the computer just to find out what these letters represent. So I wrote the Quran in the computer. Of course, the Quran in the original language is Arabic, remember? And uh, the computers, when back in 1968, they didn't have Arabic computers. So what I did, I took every Arabic letter in the Quran and I used an English letter to represent the Arabic letter. And I put the whole scripture, the final edition of God's message to the world in the computer. Then I asked the computer for uh, a number of mathematical characteristics. The number of every letter in every chapter, the number of numbers of words, and all kinds of questions. I had no idea what to expect. And uh, when the computer was through and answering my questions, a very intricate mathematical pattern emerged and fit with the older findings of mathematical codes in the original scriptures of Moses, Jesus, David, and, and so on. The mathematical code that emerged provides the first physical evidence for the existence of God. In fact, once you, you study this mathematical pattern in detail and understand it, you will no longer believe in God. You will know that God exists. You will, you will, uh, you will need faith no longer. So uh, that's how intricate and how Miraculous, this, ma this mathematical code is. As it turns out, these mysterious letters have specific counts in their chapters, and there was one common denominator in the whole scripture that is common to all these letters. We're talking about exactly half the Quran. The Quran is about 500 pages of the regular size pages, and the mysterious letters prefix. 29 chapters uh, that represent in size uh, about half the Quran. The Quran consists of 114 chapters. Many of them are short chapters. But these mysterious letters prefix about half the Quran 
And it turned out that every single set of these mysterious letters uh, is found in its chapter in multiples of 19, without a single exception. In other words, the letters are distributed within Quran according to this intricate mathematical pattern that is way beyond the human ability. If you, when you study it in detail, you will have no doubt whatsoever that there is a mathematical system proving the authenticity of Quran as God's message to the world. Uh, to be more accurate, as God's final edition of the scripture, his message to the world. <laughs> So now let me give you a few examples to uh, demonstrate the miraculous nature of this mathematical code. Uh, chapter 50, for example, in Quran is entitled Q, as I mentioned before, and is prefixed with the letter Q. When you count the letter Q in that chapter, you will find 57 Qs in the whole chapter. That is 19 times 3. It's a multiple of 19. And as I said, every single one of these mysterious letters is found in its chapter in multiples of 19. There is another chapter in Quran, one other chapter, that is also prefixed with the letter Q, and that is chapter 42. And guess what? Even though chapter 42 of Quran is more than twice as long as chapter 50, it has the same number of Q in it, 57. So, and 57 is 19 equals 3. So, the only two chapters in Quran that are prefixed with the letter Q have exactly the same number, 57 and 57. And Q, we are told in chapter 50, represents Quran. Quran is spelled with a heavy K in the Arabic language, which is represented by the letter Q. Only two chapters, 57 and 57, the total is 114. And guess what? This is the number of chapters in Quran, 114, 19 times 6. The letter N prefixes chapter 68, and when we count the letter N in that chapter, we find 133. These, as you notice, are physical facts. It is not guesswork. I'm not saying, in my opinion, Chapter 68 contains 133 ends. This is a physical fact. The chapter is initialed with the letter N, prefixed with the initial N, and it contains 133 ends. 133 is a multiple of 19. It equals 19 times 7. Chapter 36, for example, is prefixed with the letters Y, S. And when you count the letters Y and S in this chapter, the total is 285, or 19 times 15. How do you like that? This means every letter Y, every letter S in this chapter is counted, calculated, and harmonized with the other initial chapters. There is also an interlocking relationship between these letters because you find these letters in a number of chapters and they interlock with each other and all of them give you totals that are multiples of 19. We will find out why 19 before the end of this program. But at this point, I would like to quote for you uh, from Rabbi Judah the Pious, his writings of about a thousand years ago. And uh, it demonstrates the common denominator in all the scriptures, one and the same message, the Quran, the Gospel of Jesus, the Torah of Moses, the Psalms of David. Let me quote for you from uh, Rabbi Judah the Pious, where we find that the number 19 is the common denominator uh, in all the scriptures. Uh, here is what Rabbi Judah said. 900 years ago, the people, the Jews in France, made it a custom to add 
in the morning prayer the words Ashrei temi mei derech, which means blessed are those who walk the right righteous way. And our rabbi, the pious of blessed memory, wrote that they were completely and utterly wrong. It is all gross falsehood because there are only 19 times, here it is, there are only 19 times that the holy name is mentioned in that portion of the morning prayer. And similarly, you find the word Elohim 19 times. Similarly, you find that Israel were called sons 19 times. And there are many other examples. All these sets of 19, 19, here we go, are intric intricately interwined and they contain many secrets and esoteric meanings which are contained in more than eight large volumes. So this is just to give you an idea that the number 19 is the common denominator in all portions of the message, God's message to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is impossible, statistically impossible, to write a book with this kind of mathematical composition, where every letter, every word is calculated and carefully placed according to a mathematical pattern that is clearly beyond human ability. We find this mathematical pattern in God's scripture, the one and the same message in Quran and in previous scriptures. I just gave you the example of uh, from the Torah as written by Rabbi Judah the pious. <laughs> And now we come to the big question, why 19 in the older scripture as well as in the Quran? Why is 19 the common denominator of God's message to the world from the time of Adam until now? And why did it have to wait? You see, when Rabbi Judah discovered the number 19 in the older scriptures, he didn't know why 19. As you recall, when I quoted him, he said there is a secret and a great esoteric meaning to the number 19. But he didn't know why. Because this question had to wait until the completion of God's message to the world by revealing the final edition, the Quran, in the Arabic language. You see, 19 is the numerical value of the word 1 in Arabic. And this is the whole essence of the scripture, that there is one God, that we shall worship only the one God. In Arabic, the word one is written like this. It is pronounced wahid. Wahid. And at the time of revelation of Quran, there were no numbers as we know them today. They used the alphabet letters as numbers. So, the numbers were non-existent. This is a relatively recent invention, the numbers. So, let us go to this word in Arabic, the word one or wahid, and see how the numerical value equals 19. 
the first letter in this world was, was six in those days. It was the letter Y and also the number six. This is the letter A, and it represents the numeral one. This is the letter H, which represented the numeral eight. Finally, the letter D, واحد, the letter D was four. And if you add the total, six plus one is seven, seven plus eight is fifteen, fifteen plus four is 19. So there is the total, the numerical value of the word one in Arabic. And now with the completion of the scriptures through the revelation of Quran, we know why 19. 19, the common denominator of the mathematical code throughout the scriptures means one. God is one. What is more important than the mathematical code is the content of the message itself. Because the message being from our Creator tells us who we are, where we came from, where we are going, and why we are here. What is the purpose of our life? These are the most important questions as far as any human being is concerned. And now we have the answers from the most authoritative source the Creator Himself. Naturally, we cannot discuss all the contents of the message in one program. Hopefully, in a series of programs, we will present to you the contents of the message. But for now, let me deal with just one question. Who is God? Who is the one who created you and me? There is a specific one who created you and me and the whole universe. There is a certain one that we should know, who is the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God who runs this universe. Who is he? The Quran describes God as following. You see, this planet Earth is part of the Milky Way galaxy. and the Milky Way galaxy is so huge that it takes 30,000 light years. If you travel at the speed of light, it will take you 30,000 years to reach the outer limit of the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy. And our universe contains 1 billion galaxies like the Milky Way, a billion trillion stars. These numbers are actual scientific numbers. The astronomers, the scientists, stopped counting at one billion galaxies in our universe. And the billion trillion stars. That's how big our universe is. Uh, we now measured 26 billion light years within our universe. 26,000 millions of light years within our universe. And the Quran, God tells us in Quran that there are seven universes, the billion trillion stars, the one billion galaxies, the 26 billion light years are only within the smallest and innermost of seven universes. This is how God describes the universes. You can imagine seven balls inside each other. And we live in the smallest and the innermost of the seven universes. Can you imagine the size of the second universe? How about the third universe? The fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh universe. How can we describe the circumference of the seventh universe? Infinity will be the most accurate description of the, the length of the circumference of the seventh universe. And you know what? Quran describes God as holding the seven universes in his right hand. That's who God is.
God is holding the seven universes in one hand. It makes a difference whether you are holding something in both hands, like this, or within the fist of one hand. And in chapter 39 of Quran, God describes himself as holding the seven universes in his right hand. And this tells you who God is. God is the one who created the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, in the extreme accuracy that you see. The sun will rise tomorrow exactly at the specific time from the specific place because God designed it this way and he's the only one who controls it. No other entity, human or non-human, designed this universe. So this is just an example of the contents of the message. The message goes on and tells you exactly why you are here and how to fulfill the purpose of your life. But we will get into these topics in the future, God willing, and I hope you will follow this series of programs. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, please write to me or call. Our address is 739 East 6th Street, Tucson, Arizona, 85719. The telephone is area code 602-791-3989.